on my 18 year sentence there, for whatever reason, I've gone in, I've spent a year in Walton on remand, then got trans security transfer to Strangeways, I'm in there for a year and a half, I'm convicted in 2007, in the middle of 2007, for between 2007 and, 2000 and um, 2007 and 2016, I touched base in 80 establishments. Do the maths, mate. 80 establishments? Over how many years? I t look, I'd, I'd go for, say I was in Lardham Grange yeah. in June. I'd get shipped out and come back to Lardham Grange in June the next year and then get shipped out and end up down there. 80, as in 80 zero? Every three months. So what they were, That's like, that's called diesel therapy in America. Right, but what they were doing to me, why they were doing it to me, and I didn't know this till my first parole hearing, they'd been sitting on intelligence. They'd been working off false intelligence the police have, that I was involved in these explosions around the city, against police stations, outside. They had intelligence stating that I was involved in them, so they treated me accordingly, without me knowing. So I'm on map of three, tier four, there's only 2% in the whole country on that, and the terrorists, I'm on that risk, yeah? Do you want to explain what that means? Well, in this country, the, it, it, it's multi-agency public protection agency or something like that. So basically what it is, is violent criminals. In this country, if you're a criminal, you get put onto a Richter scale and it goes from mapper one, mapper two, mapper three. So you'll have mapper one for thieves, they don't need much observation. You've got Mapper 2 for half violent sex offenders and all that who need some observation. Then you've got Mapper 3, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. So you'll have Mapper 3 is for violent prisoners, and then you'll have Mapper, Mapper 3, Tier 1, which is extra violent, more control, more observation, more, more people working on it. So I was Mapper 3, Tier 4. So I'm a high up. So every time I'd land in a prison, it takes you two months to do the induction process. So I'd get through the induction process, I'd fill the form and then bang, I'm shipped out. So basically you were tortured. Yeah. Because no. the worst thing is having to move on. You want to no, settle do down, don't you? Yeah. Doing. They, they were fucking with me head deliberately. I weren't going on medication, I was riding it. I didn't do no self-protection like half the scousers do. I'm going through the system with this snitch out off that grass, Willie really Moore. So, you know, it is what it is. I ride that jail system. I get out of it, my head, and a little bit fucked. But right through them 12 years, I'm sitting in some prisons and I'm watching kids come in, apply for a course, plastering, electrician, plumbing, getting out with four qualifications. They wouldn't let me access one single plumbing course in 12 years. They wouldn't let me access plastering, electric. Any vocational skill I could pick up to better myself on my release, they wouldn't let me access them on the grounds of security information. All right, so what's the security information saying? We can't tell you, you've got to apply through the Data Protection Act. It's just, and then I'd get shipped out, and then the process would start again, then I'd apply for courses, and then I'm shipped out. And So for them full 12 years of that 18 year term, I went through it and got out the other side without a single qualification. The only qualification I did have was my own, what I'd purchased from distant learning. So I'm level three now, fitness instructing. I can tell you everything about your body, anatomy, physiology, everything, but I can't use it because of the threat to life on me. What a waste of taxpayers' money. But you've got to think how much they spent on me since I was 13. Now, if they would have just went to me at 13, right, we're, we're going to make this money, much money out of you, there's a million pounds. I wouldn't have touched crime. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how easy it is. Most criminals now, if you went up to them and went, look, there's a job, there's secure housing for 12 months, they wouldn't commit a crime. Would you say that fitness has saved your sanity? Yeah. And when did you start to turn to fitness? When I was a young, young offender. And what made you just start getting into it? Depression. Depression. Mm. Boredom. Yeah. And what was your first, like, initiation into the fitness community? A circuit. A circuit? Yeah. What did you do in the circuit? You the remember? dirty dozen. What's that? It's 12 exercises, 12 times through. It's an army circuit. I'm back when I started first going to jail. Most of the PTIs within the prison system were ex-army, so you were getting drilled like you were in the army. It's like push-ups is one, sit-ups is another. Push-ups, bare piece, sit-ups, bench jumps, kind of bench, all, all army circuits when you were a white pee, basically. 
And did that calm your brain down after you did it? No, what it done, it, it got you tired. It got you, t it helped you sleep well. Yeah. So how did you go from just being a participant as a young person into like developing these other routines, becoming a trainer? Because that's all you had to focus on. That's all I've ever had to focus on was myself and my body and my health. And what you do when you get a long sentence, you sit there and you think to yourself, right, I've got two ways of going about this. I can either get out the other end and still get an hard on, or I can get out the other end and not get an hard on. How do I want to do this? <laughs> right, so if you don't want to hard on, you'll go down the path of just fucking yourself up in the system, not training, eating shit, processed meat, smoking, taking drugs and drinking hooch. Or you can go on the hard on sense, which is educate your mind, get in the gym, keep focused, stay away from the medication and the rats. And you'll get out and you still get it hard on. So that's the, that's the, that's the channel I went down. So basically the medication or the education, you've got the medication routine system or you've got the education. I'm not being funny here, but in Arizona, there's actually an exercise that the prisoners do called dick lifts. To, get, to make sure to make, they put a wet. I've done it. <laughs> I'm going to tap on it, lad. Look, I was, read, I was reading the FHM magazine. I'm not lying. In these jails, you get some mad magazine. Not pornographic. It's, what's it called? FHM magazine. Yeah, FHM, so, yeah. Something for men anyway. So I'm opening it and it's saying like, you know, keep your potency up and all that. So what they've done, you get a wet flannel. Put the flannel on the dick and, and sort of do like reps. do press ups with the do flannel. So I'll give that a go. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you should see it now, lad. Like it's like a, it's like a fucking commando. Hey, let it out, let it out of its den. It's like a commando. It's like Rambo in a forest. Yeah, anyway, let's move on. I was doing a fair few reps in the in the shower. <laughs> Because that's, there's like an old wives tale, isn't there, around the prison, the longer you're down, you're not going to get, when you get out, you're not going to be able to get a hard on, you know, you got to keep, you gotta use it or lose it. Hard, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, your fitness. So We used to have some kid on our wing and we used to call him the king masturbator. <laughs> he was ruthless, mate. The king masturbator. Kevin Wheatman, his name was. Naughty kid. Yeah. So in Arizona, in Arizona, the etiquette was, you go in a shower on your own, do your business. Not like if you if you didn't have cell this to get you got your cellmates, you're not, you know, you, you gotta show etiquette and not be doing it. Hold on a minute here. What are you, are you talking I'm, about? I mean, <laughs> just, just move on, lad. Come on. Go where you go. All right, All right. let's go. Um, I just jump away from the masturbation. <laughs> you've talked about becoming a certified trainer. Yeah. Where did you get that knowledge from? The prison. Prison system. How? Research. Books. Books. DVDs, videos, editing. Yeah. Just had to get your mind. And where were, you, were people saying? I've been in loads of different environments and picked up loads of different skills and techniques. And, you know, I've got my own little method of training that works for me. I'm like anyone. People find what works for them and sticks with it. But my method will work for you, it'll work for him, it'll work for everyone. I've got a method of training that can have you ripped in 16 weeks. And can people contact you and arrange that? Well, I'm looking to start. Well, I've had this thing going since 2004 called Train Fit Elite. I started it up when I first got out. It was a business. It was popping off. I had a venue to take me clients. Da -da 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 -da. Police shut it down. Said I'm not allowed to do this whilst I'm on license. Just wrecked it. So that's still been there, though. It's still been flowing a little bit. I haven't been focusing on it. But as you, if you look on my YouTube, you'll see little bits of training videos. And in a month's time, I'm setting a whole new platform up, Train Fit Elite. And you can get all sorts on there. And it's all for free. I'm not going to start charging you for a workout or a bit of advice for a, for a drink or whatever. It is what it is. But if you want training off me and you want instruction off me, you'll have to give me some dough. I've got to live. I've got to eat. But I'm good at what I do. If it took me top off now, you'd probably go, well, you know, Fair you can't enough. prove it. You, you, a lot of young people have been watching your videos on your channel. And if you are watching this, the link to Darren's channel is in the description box below this video. And if you want to see some of the stuff he's doing, like... I mean, I can barely do pull-ups these days. He's going upside down and going round and just with his bare arms. You can see how strong he is right now, so. And it's natural. No steroids in here. I don't even drink protein every day. Every so often I'll have a protein drink. Yeah. So if you're watching and you want to check that out, I urge you to go over to Darren's channel and subscribe as well, help him build his subscribers up. And he's on Insta. All the links in the description box. Going back to prison then, I mean, that's a lot of time you've done. And people with status, it could go two ways. 
They've got the respect. They fit in, you know, and beefs don't arise because of that respect. Or people think, all right, he's well known as a hard man. If I take him down, I'm going to have a bigger name than him. During your journey through the prison system, where were you with, with all that?